Welcome to the Money Watch Show. It's Tuesday, September 3rd, and we are here trying to help you make better or less bad financial decisions or maybe just big life decisions that are impacting your finances. And the we is me, Jill Schlesinger, CBS News business analyst and certified financial planner. And my partner in crime is Mark Talercio, who is also a certified financial planner, as well as the executive producer of everything, Jill on Money. Hello, Mark. Hello, Jill. Eight months down, four to go. Can't believe it. Here we are. It, You know, whenever I think about Labor Day, I know that it is not officially autumn yet, but in many places where, at least where I grew up, that first day after, that first Tuesday after Labor Day was the beginning of your fall semester, your school year begins. And uh, so I get very excited about that. Were you a kid who liked school or not, Mark? Uh, did I like school or not? I mean, no, I did not like school. I probably enjoyed seeing some people, although I don't even know about that because I really don't care for most people. Uh, <laughs> So, no, I don't think I was getting too excited for the beginning of the school year. I always liked it. I love the new school supplies. I guess that today in this digital age, I wonder what kind of school supplies you get. Like, oh, what do you well, send off for, for our boy who's off to, uh, you know, grown up school now? Yeah, well, Theo starts school on Thursday, first day of school. Let me give you the uh, the the list, the requested okay. list for this year. And mind you, this is for kindergarten. Yes, I know. So here we go. Kindergarten list. Two rolls of paper towels. Oh. Three boxes of facial tissue. Okay. Two canisters of disinfectant wipe. What, is, is he a janitor? What's <laughs> happening? What? I'm not sure I this, understand I know you, you expected pencils and crayons. Totally. totally. Uh, one bottle of hand soap. And this is odd. I don't know where this comes from, but one new headphone. What? Okay. Yep. That's the list that was requested for kindergartners. So that's the stuff I think that they want you to get for helping keep the classroom uh, tidy. clean, tidy, and in order. So on top of that, then they ask you to submit a, a check for $50. And if you can give more, give more, which we usually do. And then I think they use that money. And that's mm. when that's what they use to buy all of the supplies, the construction paper, the crayons, all that stuff. I find the whole idea that essentially um, we are just telling you that we need your kids to help us tidy the room. Maybe that is more important than anything else. You know what? I'll tell you, uh, I was at work this morning and I was in the broadcast center. And uh, as I tape this, first of all, there's no one in the newsroom anymore, but it is so clean. It used to be disgusting in there. So maybe this is they're on to something. The only problem is the kids actually are little germ harvesters. And uh, they're messy. So I know Theo's not. He's a pretty clean kid. But uh, $50 for other stuff. I also like that. Taxes, yeah. not important. It is a public school. Like, it it's is. not like, so, you know, it's not as if it's a private school. I don't know. It's very strange. Um, that's a weird list. And now we're going to move on. So <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say with that about that list, except that it's a weird one. It's a far cry from like a new notebook, pens, paper. Trapper keeper. Yeah. I mean, is there any, I'm just thinking about the thing that you would actually want if you were the teacher. I guess that that's true. The, you know, the paper towels, the disinfectant, big, huge can of Lysol. Never know when your next uh, problem is going to arise. Garbage bags, maybe gloves, masks. I don't know. What a world. What a world indeed. All right. Listen, let's stop yakking. Hey, if you guys have a financial question and you want to tell us what you're excited about in the new school year, give us a holler. Just go to our website, jillonmoney.com. Click the Contact Us button and write us a note. And if you want to join us live, check that box. Mark will do everything else while you're on the website. Sign up for the free weekly newsletter. And also check out all the other cool stuff that lives there, including a link to our YouTube show, which is called Jill on Money Powered by the Compound. Right now, Mark, we are going to talk to Dave, who's on the line from Illinois. Hello, Dave. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing great. What can we do for you, sir? Yeah, so my wife and I, we've been saving for several years, planning for retirement, always thinking it was going to be out there uh, quite a ways. And we're both getting kind of, I guess, complacent maybe with our jobs. And we start looking at retirement. And I've spent 
I've spent the better part of a decade just constantly planning for the future. And I've gotten to the point where, um, you know, retirement's starting to look pretty good. And mm -hmm. uh, we've gotten to the point where our FU goal, our mm -hmm. money goal, is about five years away. What does that goal represent to you? In other words, when you say FU, like that could be like, I could just call it quits, or is that like I could do it something different? How do, what do you think about that fund of money? Yeah, so listening to you, you, you use the term career pivot a lot. And mm -hmm. I've actually decided that I'm going to go back to college and try to get my finance degree and become a CFP. You don't have to go back to college to do that, but I'll get to that in a second. That's awesome, and I love it. That yeah. is absolutely fabulous. Yeah, worst case scenario would be I never go back to work again, but I have enough money to not have to do so. But I, I okay. don't think we won't ever work again. Okay. How old are you, Dave? 37. What? Yep. So young. How old is your wife? 37. And you guys have kids? Nope, no kids. Oh, uh, hence the career pivot. Right. Um, so... How much do you earn right now, the two of you? Combined, it's around 260000 And are you both contributing to retirement? Yes. She's maxing out her 401k. I'm doing the 5% uh, match. And tell us about the money you've accumulated. So as far as like all the cash we have, including retirement accounts, we're at about nine fifty, nine hundred fifty thousand. 950000 Mm-hmm. And with company matches and everything we're putting in and then the savings into the brokerage accounts, we're saving about 140 grand a year. Oh my God. On 106, on 260,000. These guys spend nothing. I can already tell you they spend. Yeah. Nothing. What do you spend? Uh, we spend $3,000 yes, a month. Yes, what do you spend? Yes. Our, this is fire. Our annual budget is around 50 grand. That could be my monthly budget some months. Um, okay. 50 grand a year. Are you on like a fire movement kind of schedule? Have you have you gotten involved in that? I guess you could say, yeah, it's probably like a fire deal. But okay. really, it's just it's I, I want to have options. I feel like I'm in a golden handcuff scenario because I only mm -hmm. have a high, I only have a high school diploma mm -hmm. and I I'm working at the same company for 16 years and I've moved up within that company and they've taken great care of me. But. I'm a manager now. I wish I would have stayed a technician, just a grunt. Mm. But now being a manager, it just doesn't light light me on fire. So, mm. yeah, it's so weird when that happens, right? In, in in so many professions, it's like you take the person who has this great tech technical skill, you make that person a manager. You take this person who's a great salesperson, you make them a manager, and it's just not as much fun as that original job. I mean, some people are really well suited to management. It's not for me. I get it. So. Do both you and your wife feel the same way in terms of this idea like, okay, we got almost a million dollars saved in all of our accounts. We don't spend that much money. Do you both feel like this is, you know, in your sight line now? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, she she's always been like the short term, the daily, weekly, monthly uh, money nerd. She takes care of all the bills and all that kind of stuff. And I've always been the long term. And just here in the last six months or so, she's been getting kind of frustrated. She just recently went back to school and got her accounting degree. Mm. She And about a year ago, she became an accounting manager. Mm. And so, again, same deal with me. She just she was a she was a better, I guess you call just like an accountant, just an associate. And now yeah. as a manager, she's getting burnt out. So. Mm. It's we're definitely on the same page. We both feel like, OK, we're four to five years out and then we're going to buy ourselves that that freedom to go try something different if we want to. Well, I mean, you have a lot of money. What tell us about the house? The house is paid for um, worth about three hundred thousand. Mark, was that a dumb question? And Maybe. I totally like, of course, I totally get the argument for keeping mortgages now. But hmm. I just we. We had so little when we, we first got married and we had mm -hmm. so much debt. And then we bought our first home in 2007, couldn't sell it, even though we didn't live there. It was three hours away. We moved, had to rent it out. We lost money on it. Like mm -hmm. it just put such a sour taste in our mouth. So when we first got debt free, uh, gosh, I guess about a decade ago now, 
we we decided that we just we we couldn't hold we couldn't hold debt. So when we bought this house in 2019, uh, we paid for it in about 12 months. Oh my god, <laughs> so fast. So Mark, you have other questions for our boy Dave? Fire Dave. Dave is fired up. No, I mean, do they have a mo- enough money to never have to work again? I, I don't think so. They're, they're spending 50 grand a year. Yeah, you still have to have, you still have to, but you could find a way between you and your wife. I got to imagine, even if you didn't, like, let's say you did the career shift, which you can totally do, right? But I have to imagine, even if she said, I just want a different job, could she make, you know, 50, 60, 70? Could, but the, between the two of you, could you make 80 grand a year gross? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And get healthcare. And get healthcare. That's the other thing. Well, and that's just it with the, with the marketplace and the subsidies that come with the, um, getting insurance through the marketplace. I mean, even if I make over the cap, the insurance is around 1200 bucks a month, which I know sounds crazy, but you know, I I have factored that in, you know, the plan, Mm. the plan that I, I wanted to bounce off of you guys is that you know, we're working on saving five years of expenses right now. Um, and when I say five years of expenses, we're actually shooting for 500 grand in our brokerage account in five years. Oh my God. Additionally, uh, an additional 500 or adding to the brokerage, adding to the, so an, an additional 400,000. Cause we've so got there's, right now is a hundred in there and you're going to add another 400 grand in five years within correct. five years. Correct. Okay. So that gives us then enough money in the brokerage that we could start doing a Roth conversion ladder. It'll start around 60 grand that first year, but then it adjusts up for inflation. It also adjusts up in order to make sure that all of the money in our 401ks is out before we turn 74. That way I don't have to worry about RMDs. This man is amazing. You love him. And then he is our hero. My mind can't work this way. And then, awesome. I mean, I love numbers, but I can't do it. And then I have uh, social security, eighty percent of social security, since we're only going to get eighty percent of it starting in twenty thirty four, starting at age seventy. And of course, we have to wait because she's going to outlive me by probably fifteen to twenty years if you look at just life expectancy <laughs> in our families. So I want to make oh sure God. she gets as much as possible. Yeah, seventies are seventies your time. Right. And then I also factored in at age seventy five, kicking in seven grand a month, adjusted for inflation for assisted living costs, moving into an assisted living facility. I gotta go. I'm, I'm Mark's I'm done. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. He's uh, this guy's perfect. So listen, Dave, a couple of things. First of all, you're amazing. I love you. Um, you do have a planner's mind. Mark, there is no there's no uh, college degree requirement for a CFP, is there? Yeah, there is. You actually do. You need a bachelor's degree. You do? Yeah. That's yeah. so weird. I knew someone who, oh, wait a minute. Maybe he did finally get a degree or maybe he was grandfathered in. Okay. The hard um, part, the hard part's going to be getting, it said 6,000 hours of experience. Yeah. So that, so that's one thing that you can do is find yourself like it. Let's say you, you go back. Right. Do you have you have uh, a nearby place where, you know, even if you just started taking some classes now, how uh, do you have any credits so far from for college or not? Yes, I actually I have I have 17 credits and I'm meeting with my college advisor this afternoon at 245. Oh, so. great. I mean, look, I, I would try to get a college degree on the cheap, as you know, really. Um, and then you can start finding and doing a little research and say like who are the finance who are the cfps in the in the area and talk to them and tell them like what you're hoping to do and you know you can start getting some a li- at the very least you could just see what it's like to walk into an office like that because you know it may be that you love doing these numbers for yourself or you love doing these numbers for like your friends, but you may be like, Ugh, I don't want to work in a financial planning office. The thing is you'll have to get some experience. So you'll have to like suck it up and do it, but you don't have to do that today. You okay. really don't. But I would start to find out who are the folks in the area who are doing good work, you know, and you'll be able to sniff them out. Well, oh, we sell insurance policies. Mm, no, thanks. We'll go to the next one. Oh, we do financial planning, like real financial planning. Oh, okay. I'm interested because you like the planning process, right? Right. Yeah. Mm. And this actually came, this actually came up about five years ago. 
well, about four years ago. It was right after I became a manager talking to one of my coworkers and he's a big money nerd too, getting ready to retire. And he said, Hey, my Edward Jones advisor is getting ready to retire. And they're always talking about looking for new people. And I, mm. I met with them and the, the first thing they said was, um, we will, we will put you through a 12 week course to certify you for selling insurance. Mm. And, and that part right there is like, man, I don't, I don't want to be a salesman. Like I get no. that's their, that's what they do. And that's fine. Yeah. I just, I don't know that that's for me. Right. And, so. and it could be like, look, I know people who, um, like, I remember when I was a financial advisor a hundred years ago, I taught a CFP class at one of the local universities. And there was a woman who was one of my students who was like a, a return to work. Like, let's say she was 50 years old and going through the CFP coursework. Okay. I plucked her out and I said, whenever you're done, we're going to hire you because she she's like you just loved the planning work, loved it, loved it, loved it. Now, what I'll also tell you is she ended up being a pretty good salesperson by accident, meaning that she just loved doing the work so much that when she sat down with somebody and said, I just I don't want to sell a product, but I I sure do want to sell the service of financial planning because I think it's so important for you. Like when you really believe in the thing. It's very, it, it, it might come very naturally to you. So I yeah. love the idea. I really do. I think, I think it's an exciting and certainly very possible um, given everything you've said. And look, as you said, if you, for example, if you and your wife can just, you, you, you might say like in a few years, five years, you got all your money, you got a bunch of money saved, but you're still willing to do a little work on the side just to pay the bills I don't think there's anything really terrible here. I think you've got a lot of opportunity. And if you never had to touch the corpus, meaning let's say you have a million today and then you save another four, like that you're really not going to touch that. But in five years that you made some sort of transition, you will probably keep working. I just think it sounds to me like you don't want to not work. It's just you don't want to work in these types of jobs. Precisely. Yep, so right. I think you're I so you're not really a fire adherent. You are a fine. You're ready for your next endeavor. Whether you decide that you know you want maybe you go through and you do the CFP and you'd be like Mark. I don't like Mark went and did the whole CFP and we talked very seriously about like do you want to get a job being a CFP? And so I sent him off to go talk to a friend of mine who has a. A company, and so what did you think, Mark? Did you think that was that that office environment was for you? Uh, it could have been. They chose not to hire me. That wasn't my decision. That was their decision. Yeah, but I think still, I don't see you in an office. Yeah, I think that ship has uh, long sailed. I know, but I'm just saying that like there's ways to use a designation like this for Dave. Like it would be like I I would love to get this designation. Maybe I don't want to do full-time financial planning. Maybe I'll do like fee-only financial planning for people in my neighborhood and like make a tiny bit of money and be really happy doing that. Well, and that's actually, that's what kind of finally pushed me over the edge was even before I was a manager, I helped all of my coworkers and now my employees with mm -hmm. their 401k planning. And I spend a couple of hours every year putting together a presentation to show them the differences between the target date 2020 fund versus the target date 2050, as okay. well as the large cap and mid cap. And I explained to them what the market's been doing. And I explained to them how they can't stock pick and be better than what the overall market is. Like I, I had one just a month ago say, man, you should, you should do this for a living. I would pay you to do this. See that? And it's, yeah. and, and there's, you know, this is a company of 12,000 people. Of course, I don't know all of them, but right. I know the few hundred that work in my area, and I I know that I could benefit half of them, yeah, just just by doing this. But like you said, I've got to I've got to grit my teeth and go find that experience to get the actual CFP designation. Yeah, and listen, by the way, I don't know how big a company it is, but there's no reason why you can't say like, all right, I'm going to go get my CFP, and then what I want to do is I want to come back and be like your in-house financial planning firm. Right. I've 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 considered that. I don't. I don't know if they would go for that, but I think yeah. I think it's great. It's so much fun. You're very passionate. I think it's going to be fantastic. You've already saved all this money. If your people are listening, you know, you're making a lot of money, but you didn't make this much money for the whole time you've been working. So 
just so everyone can get a sense of this, like when you were saving this money, it's just because you saved early and you you don't spend a lot. I mean, that's really the issue, right? Correct. Yeah. When when we started this when we started this together 17 years ago, uh, we combined made 30 grand a year. Mm. And then in about two years, I got the job that I'm at now. She quit working and I started at $40,000, 20 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. And, and then here we are today. She, she's moved up. I've moved up and yeah, we, you know, she, she just started working again about seven years ago. And again, that was an entry level and then just worked her way up to where she's at now. So that's awesome. It's It's a great story. And all that money's. All that money's making way more money than than we're making now. You know, all yeah, those pennies we put away. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say. This is the story of the power of compounding. Absolutely. Like, if you start in your 20s, I know that, like, 20-year-olds are like, I can't do it. Okay, fine. And, and some of them have debt, so I get that. But when you start really early, you don't even have to do it in an extreme way. Like, imagine if every single person in the United States who starts working has to immediately put 10% into some sort of retirement savings. Like it's a mandatory thing as if it were a pension, we'd have no retirement crisis at all. Absolutely. It's amazing. Dave, congratulations. And thank you so much for joining us. And we're really psyched to kind of keep track with your progress. So let us know how it goes with the CFP. Okay. I sure will. Thank you guys. If you would like to get on the air with us, it's so easy. Just go to jillonmoney.com, click the Contact Us button, write us a note, check the box. Mark does it all. He is the best because he is the co-host and executive producer, as well as the web king of everything, Jill on Money. We're distributed by Paramount Global. We drop our episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen and lift someone up. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you on Thursday. Paramount Podcasts.